Welcome back to another episode of Tech TLDR. In today's SpaceX news update, we're going to be talking about the SN10, what happened with that yesterday, and moving forward regarding a static fire, a possible launch date. This is from the FAA and SpaceX, as well as other news in space regarding Blue Origin and the Mars mission that happened just this morning. So if you want to know all about that, stick through the whole episode. Let's get into why you clicked on this video, which is the possible launch date and the activity regarding the SN10. So yesterday, the SN10 went underwent a cryo-proof test. What this is, SpaceX will put extremely cold liquids through this vehicle to simulate the temperatures it's going to need when it launches, the fuels, as well as when it's actually in space, the temperatures. Can this vehicle handle those temperatures and pressures? They successfully handled it, meaning that it is set for a static fire. Will we see one today? No. Today, there is no closures of that area. In fact, I have here they're actually working in that area on an orbital launch pad. So whenever they are working construction-wise in that area, there is no testing going on whatsoever. They never have any sort of personnel in that area to do static fires, proofing, especially not a launch. There's no launches coming today. But just to give you guys some insight as to what's actually happening currently there on the site. Now regarding a possible launch date in a static fire. So I talked about this in a previous episode. The SN10 has the clearance, or SpaceX I should say, has the clearance to do a Starship static fire tomorrow, Wednesday, Thursday and Friday. That's when they have closures for the roads in that area and there's not going to be any people, um, any pedestrians, things like that allowed in the area. Now this is on FAA's temporary flight restriction website that through February 11th to February 14th there is flight restrictions, right? However, they haven't actually authorized the launch of the Starship. Kind of the same problem we had last time with the SN9. There were flight restrictions in place, however the FAA didn't actually approve of the Starship to launch. To give more backstory on that, I know I, lo I always have a lot of new listeners coming in so I just want to make sure everybody understands. What's going on is when SpaceX does one of these launches of the Starship, or any launch for that reason, any testing, and something goes wrong, the FAA gets involved because they need to understand what is the worst case scenario when that problem goes wrong again. They have to understand how bad can something like that get because there, there's a town nearby. There are people near this area. They can't have something be too catastrophic. The odds of people getting hurt has to be less than one in a million. So every time they do a launch and something goes wrong, they have to submit an they have to submit paperwork essentially the FAA explaining what went wrong and what is the worst possible case scenario if that same thing went wrong again. That is why the FAA is involved so much. Again, we've talked about before, their policies, their rules are very out of date. They, they don't have the structure in place to handle what SpaceX is currently doing. That's really not even a topic of argument. I don't think it has to do with administrations in terms of like the government suppressing them. I think this is more just the FAA, they're following the old rules they have. And even though they know they suck and they're outdated, they have to follow the rules. As time goes on, I'm sure that they will update and put something much better in place to handle the constant flights that we're going to be seeing over the next few years. But until then, this is what we have to deal with. So February 11th through the 14th, they have the clearance for that. We could see a static fire as soon as tomorrow, Wednesday, and the 11th on Thursday. I don't think we'll see an actual flight this weekend though. Again, that's just my opinion. Let me know in the comments what you think. If you think we will see one or not, personally, I don't think we will. I think it's just too soon. I would put my money that it will probably be at the earliest beginning of next week, Monday or Tuesday. Again, at the very earliest. Now if that's all you want to know regarding the SN10. I understand you leave the episode. Be sure to click the like button on your way out and also subscribe to the channel if you want more content like this. But if you want more space news, we'll get into that as well. Blue Origin released a video actually today on their YouTube channel regarding the descent element, ah, descent element lander they have for the Artemis program from NASA. They're still working on that apparently. That is still trying to come to fruition. This is going to be a little cargo lander to launch onto the moon. Blue Origin does a much better job of explaining this in their YouTube video. I would recommend watching that. I watched that earlier this morning. Really interesting. Blue Origin doesn't really announce much not that they really have much to announce to begin with so whenever they do it's cool to follow it's cool to see that company expand 
Jeff Bezos, if you don't know, is leaving Amazon and taking on Blue Origin full time. He is leaving the one of the biggest companies in the entire planet to take on Blue Origin. I think with him being there full time, getting things rolling much faster, I don't think they're going to compete with SpaceX anytime soon. I would I would be very certain though that their programs, their progress is going to get much better. He's a smart dude. Whether you like him or hate him for being a billionaire, whatever the reason is, the guy's smart. He knows what he's doing. I think he's going to really expand this company much faster. He's going to be putting a lot more money into it as well. So Blue Origin, another company we're going to be keeping a close eye on in the future. And what happened this morning? So the United Arab Emirates successfully got their Hope Probe into the Mars orbit. This, as I talked about in the last episode, is going to track the atmosphere of Mars, understanding the gases there, understanding how can we hopefully one day terraform their atmosphere to replicate Earth's, whether it has to be natural process, uh, artificial, whatever it is. This will just give us more information as to what we need to do, what is going on on Mars. We have limited resources, limited knowledge about the planet, obviously. We don't even know completely about our own planet as it is. And the great, what I like about this, a lot of people, I wouldn't say a lot of people, but there are some people that they want their country to be the country that wins the space race. They don't like seeing other countries like China, United Arab Emirates getting in this. But I beg to differ. I actually enjoy it. To me, space is really a place where you leave like, nationalism your pride and your country and things like that you leave it aside and you just focus on the fact that as human beings we just want to expand and see what's out there it's about curiosity and exploration i don't see any problem with any country trying to figure out what's going on in our galaxy in our solar system on other planets whatever it is as long as there's no destruction or anything like that going on and it's purely for a research purpose when we go to mars or we go to the moon i don't want a united states town or a Chinese city I like I want a Martian city you know I want just a a Mars city finding out what's going on there how can we turn this into another home we go to the moon I don't want the United States town United States whatever it is like I just just have a Mars and a moon city like that's it um yeah it's just cool to see another country getting into space United Arabs, they have a ton of money, a ton of money. So it's good to see that millions of dollars, billions of dollars are going to space uh, research. That's all I have for you guys on today's episode. Another thing I want to actually announce as well. I will also be doing EV videos. I've been saying this for a while, but it's coming to fruition. I will be. So I may not be doing space videos every day. I may be doing every other day or depending on the activity. I feel as though with the recent episodes, I've been kind of talking too much about the same thing over and over, and it's kind of bugging me, and I just don't want to keep repeating the same info to you guys, because sometimes that's all it is. So that being said, there may be days where I don't do a space update, I'll do EV news. I know a lot of you guys want space updates and aren't crazy about the EV stuff, but I also have people that do. It's a new thing I'm going to bring to the channel, and I know that all my subscribers so far really like the content I put out, so I'm sure you guys will enjoy this as well. And if you don't like the EV stuff, you can just skip it and watch the space stuff. But either way, be sure to click the like button, subscribe to the channel for more content, and have a good one.